Lately, we've seen a lot of discussion around the topic of Lightroom presets and why you as photographers should or shouldn't use them. We think it's an interesting conversation, and as photographers who make presets, we thought we'd throw in our two cents. We've bought a lot of preset packs over the years. Some have been great, and others have been huge disappointing wastes of money. We're gonna look at some common objections to using presets and give our thoughts on why or why not they're good arguments. Here we go. Let's take a look back to film photography. Each film stock you use in film photography contains its own characteristics, the way it treats colors, handles light, and the type of grain it produces. If you shoot photos on Kodak Portra 400 film, your photos are gonna have the Portra 400 characteristics. Now moving to digital, we obviously have way more control in the post-processing of our images and have virtually infinite possibilities. If all a preset does is emulate the look of film, like Visco's collection, for instance, what's wrong with that? Keep in mind, you aren't looking back at the work of great film photographers thinking their photos look the same as someone else's just because they use the same film stock. With this objection, there's some credence to the fact that lighting conditions and location and overall color palette of your image is going to be different than the example shown in whatever preset packet being marketed to you. So they'll work differently for your photos, right? Maybe. Presets that contain a lot of hue, saturation, and luminance changes may look great on some photos and look absolutely terrible on others. This is why we believe for presets to really work well as a starting point, they should contain few HSL adjustments and instead rely on other parameters like calibration to make color changes. Otherwise, you end up with an outdoor blue sky preset, an outdoor high noon preset, and an indoor tungsten lighting preset. Presets like that are probably making broad changes that just won't work in many instances. However, when you focus on parameters like the tone curve, calibration, or even a small amount of split toning, the preset will work better on a broad variety of lighting settings and conditions. Heck, we even made videos that show you how you can create your own preset to work well in a variety of conditions. It can be done. For instance, we have a portrait preset that gets applied to every photo throughout a wedding day. Over eight hours in several locations, both indoors and out, there are a ton of different lighting and color scenarios, but the right type of preset can get you 95% of the way there. Okay, so if you use presets, you must be a dummy when it comes to editing, right? Not necessarily. With a lot of presets, they provide you a solid starting point for your editing. You can then dive into the parameters and make adjustments based on your style, subject, whatever. In fact, using presets really helped me learn Lightroom years ago. After applying a preset, I would go through Lightroom and turn off panels to see how a certain group of settings were affecting my image. For instance, you may think that the HSL section or split toning is adding in a lot of color, but it could be the individual RGB curves. Or maybe you think the HSL section is doing the heavy lifting, when really, it's all in the calibration. You can really play with each parameter and finesse the preset to your own liking. Starting from scratch without a preset, it can be hard to know where to even begin. So while we do like presets, we don't think you should mindlessly slap them on your photos. Dive into every parameter and setting and know how it's actually affecting your photos. Well, that one's true. Just kidding. In the same vein as the previous point, some people think using a preset makes you lazy. We think, rather, they can enable you to work smarter and not harder. We cannot imagine editing a thousand images from a wedding without a preset, whether it's something we make ourselves or something we purchase. There's no sense in creating a new tone curve for every lighting scenario in a wedding when you can leave the tone curve alone and maybe just pull up the shadows a little more and bring down the highlights. By using a preset, your image's black point and white point won't be at varying levels, your shadows will have similar amounts of detail, and your colors, let's just say your greens, will all be the same treatment throughout. For instance, the green foliage inside the wedding venue will be treated similarly to the green inside the bride's bouquet. I want my body of work to be consistent. Clients probably booked me because they liked my style of photography and the overall look of my images. When I deliver wedding photos, I want them to be consistent throughout. When clients have a photo album made or simply look at their blog post of their wedding, it won't look like 17 different photographers shot it. It's much easier to maintain consistency over a large collection of photos when you apply the same base settings to every photo. My name's Rachel and I'm three years old. I like extreme sports and I'm looking for a guy who can build a beautiful website fast. If you don't use Squarespace, you can't be first place. What's up? My wife is gonna kill me for being here. Did that just say you don't use Squarespace? What's Squarespace? Next. I don't have time for anyone who doesn't have time for Squarespace's award-winning 24-hour customer support. Did that just say SoundCloud wrapper? Next. If he doesn't use Squarespace's beautiful custom templates, then he doesn't deserve this beautiful template. And also no SoundCloud wrappers. Please tell me you use Squarespace. Use it? Girl, I married it.
So on Instagram, we ask what questions people have on presets. So we're just gonna take a few minutes and answer those questions quickly. How do you make presets that work across different lighting conditions? This is something that we kind of touched on earlier in this video, but if you wanna know more about making your own preset, check out our how to make a killer Lightroom preset in five minutes video. What's the best way to start creating your own presets? Same, same thing. Yeah. What's the best way to use them for learning? Yeah, so as I mentioned in the video, turning off the panels with that switch, you can see how each uh, different section is really affecting the photo. And then you can dive in and, and finesse that if you'd like. Great, okay. What's a reasonable amount to spend on presets? I mean, I've seen them range anywhere from like 10 bucks to like 120 bucks. So it just kind of depends on uh, your budget and what you have available. And if you're making money from photography, you can maybe rationalize purchasing more expensive presets. I have purchased like $100 presets before that were really bad. So that's not necessarily an indication of quality, but generally speaking, if um, the developer spends more time really honing the presets and making them really good, they're gonna wanna get paid more for them. Um, so it kind of just depends on your own, your own budget, really. Yeah, you can kind of tell um, if the person selling them has a big audience to sell to, uh, look at their uh, like Instagram feed and see what their consistency in editing looks like. Um, that's a good indication whether or not the presets will be. And if they use their own presets, because some yeah. people make them and they don't even use them. We've used our presets for years. Do you think you're limiting your creative choices and reduce your ability to develop your own style with presets? That's a good question. I think your style is way more than just your editing style. Your style is the way that you compose a shot. Um, your unique eye um, is what the photo ends up being. And the preset or the editing that you do in post, I kind of just serves to keep your work looking consistent across the board. It's, and it, it might have a style, like ours is more, um, people say it's like washed out more, but ours is, we have more of a film style. We like to emulate film more to keep it looking kind of more timeless than like the punchier Poppy, styles digital, that, yeah. Yeah, that people do today. So that helps with our timeless feel that we want to go with in our photos, but in general, our photos have a certain vibe and a certain feel, not just because of the editing that we do, but because of everything that goes into the actual, you know, shoot, yeah, taking the photo. Yeah, the, the editing just kind of enforces the style that we want to have anyway. It enforces it, it's not the actual, yeah. it's not your style, it just enforces it. But yeah, we have a lot of Lightroom videos on like how to go about developing presets and just working in Lightroom in general. We highly recommend knowing that software inside and out regardless of whether you use presets or not. Yeah. Oh, and don't feel bad if you use presets because most of the photographers that you follow probably use presets, and if they don't, they're doing a lot of extra work that they don't need to be doing. We hope this cleared up any misconceptions you may have had about presets, or maybe it just made you angry because you've been burned before on trash presets. Either way, that's our heavily biased opinion on the subject. If you like using photo presets, give us a thumbs up. If you hate using photo presets, give us a thumbs up. See you next year. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,